nowadays everybody scared of calling people. Haiya, why so pussy? Why you scared of call? Calling people is the safest. You can piss them off. They can't punch you. You call them. You tell them they an idiot. You're not gonna get beat up. The worst you hear is F- you. Boop, boop, boop. All right, listeners. All right, nieces and nephews. Welcome back to another episode of Haya with Nigel Lang. A comedy podcast about disappointment. We look at the disappointing moments in life and we try to find the funny in it. How are you guys? How is everybody doing? Today is 16th of December, Thursday. I'm in London and it seems like everybody's tested positive for COVID today. I go on my social media. Everybody has their lateral flow test now. Is this a cultural zeitgeist moment of doing the lateral flow test and showing it off to people? Yeah, I never see anyone uh, just do a test and show it. Until today, I guess it's because, you know, there's a record number of cases in London, uh, in the UK, I think. So that's why people are doing it and everybody's traveling and so many people are testing positive. I, I kind of want to test positive. You know, I, I posted an Instagram story today about my guest room, which is finally done. We've, we've, we finished painting it and it looks lovely. And I have a PS5. I got it two months ago. Uh, I was so excited when I bought it because, you know, it's in short supply. You have to stand in a queue and then you have to like click it, refresh, 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 refresh and buy it. And I I finally got my hands on it, but it's still sitting in its box. So I want to get COVID so I can finally take a break. That's how I avoid burnout. It's not like taking care of yourself is going on a spa holiday. That's not how I avoid burnout. Getting COVID is how I avoid burnout. (laughs) I don't know if I work a lot or if I'm just very inefficient at working or I just don't want to or am not good at delegating. But I feel I'm always working. I don't remember the last day I didn't work. So COVID would be nice. Okay, I'm sure after I said that, I think I'm probably going to get it. (laughs) I think it's karma. I'll probably get COVID and get really sick. I've signed up for a booster, so hopefully not. But yeah, if I get COVID, holy shit. I'm going to download all the games for the PS5. That's going to be a great Christmas. COVID is just a way for me to not feel guilty of ordering delivery every day. Because now, I my kitchen's still being done up. My kitchen downstairs is still being done up. I, I, not, my, not kitchen downstairs. I, say, I make it sound like I have two kitchens in my house. No, that's my, my kitchen, which is downstairs... Is still being done up. I only have one kitchen. I'm not that bougie, okay? I have seen houses with two kitchens. And that's where I draw the line. When people say eat the rich, I say eat the people with two kitchens, okay? It'll be easier too. You can chop, you eat the top half in kitchen one, eat the bottom half in kitchen two. (laughs) Oh, so I I need to wear this uh, Santa hat. I'm trying to get more festive in here. Sorry for the audio only people, but uh, you guys should tune into the YouTube see me podcasting in a Santa hat. I think I look okay. I think I look okay. So yes, COVID is uh, at an all-time high in the UK. So stay safe out there, people. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, I try not to read too much into the news, but uh, I get my COVID news when I try to organize uh, dinners or meetups with friends. That's how I know how serious it is. (laughs) Because... My group of Asian friends, they're very, very in tune with the latest COVID news. So we have a WhatsApp group with uh, me and a couple friends. And I think, how many of us are in there? Three or four? I don't remember now. Every week, I'll be like, hey, guys, you guys want to meet up for dinner this week? When are you free? And then if they say yes and they try to meet up, then I know, oh, COVID's okay. COVID's under control. You know, they still want to meet. They're still taking the risk of going out to dinner. But today I texted them, hey guys, what's the plan for Saturday? Because we plan, we're planning on going to eat on Saturday, right? So I was like, hey, what's the plan for Saturday? Should I make a restaurant booking for you guys? And then one of my friends is like, uh, I don't know if you know about this, but uh, the COVID is really bad right now. And uh, I've been in contact with a lot of people who tested positive. So uh, we're going to postpone this, this dinner. So I don't really read COVID news. My friends give me the COVID news. 
Uh, yeah, if you have travel plans, man, if you're listening to this and you have travel plans coming up, uh, happy Christmas, by the way. If you have travel plans coming up, fucking go now. They're going to lock us down again. Go, go. What are you waiting for? I got a friend who was like, yeah, I'll leave London, you know, the 23rd, fly back to Canada. I'm like, oh, well, good luck, woman. <laughs> you're not going to make it. It's not looking good. You should flee now. Remember how earlier this year... The U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan and journalists, American journalists or journalists there who helped the American forces were just trying to flee the country ASAP. That's what you should be doing. They're fleeing the Taliban. You are you need to flee Omicron. That's what you need to flee. Omicron is a Taliban of COVID. Go now before they, they create new rules and stuff. I booked the booster. And then another Malaysian friend uh, of mine, who, who's in London too, he texted me, have you got your booster? I said, yes, I got it for December 30th. And he said, no, man, reschedule it, get it quicker. You have to get the booster before COVID gets you. I, I, I guess he has a point, okay. But, you know, I don't have the time, I've booked it. Just let me wait till the booster comes, you know? I'll just try not to get sick. Or if I get sick, I will just try to not take a lateral flow test so they can't ever know for sure if I have COVID. <laughs> I guess faint ignorance. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I got COVID. You know the time you came to my house and we just, I just talked to you and spat in your face and we drank from the same wine glass? Remember that time? I, 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 I was, you remember the time I was coughing and we were eating from the same spoon? Remember that time? Yeah, I felt ill, but I didn't test for COVID, so I, I I don't know. Maybe I gave you COVID. I don't know. But okay, enough of the COVID talk. It's uh, it, it it's it's getting very depressing. If if I keep doing the COVID talk, every episode is gonna be COVID talk. You know. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for the support or for episode one. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much if you listened or if you watch on YouTube and subscribe and if you written a review or a rating, I really appreciate it. I see, uh, I've seen a few reviews and ratings coming in now. You know, it's only been, uh, as of recording, it's only been 24 hours since the episode dropped. So thank you so much for the love and support. I really appreciate it. It was really nerve wracking, you know, releasing episode one. I lost some sleep over it because I scheduled it to go live, you know, Wednesday, 6 a.m. UK time. And then Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. UK time. I woke up and I was just like, oh, do people, do people like the podcast? Do they like the episode? You know, because in my previous podcast with Evelyn, who, you know, we all miss. I miss her. A lot of listeners miss her. Uh, we decided to, you know, uh, take a high, uh, stop the podcast essentially and do our own thing because, you know, we are, our creative voices have been getting stronger and stronger, which is great for our own individual careers, but sometimes it's, it's not very compatible. So there's no ill feeling there. Uh, it's, it's all love uh, and she's doing great, you know, so it's, it's all good and she's going to start her own thing soon too. Um, but yes, when I was doing Rise to Meet You, my previous podcast with her, you know, if people didn't like it, I was like, yeah, maybe they they prefer Evelyn's vibe. You know, she's kinder and nicer and more gentle and objectively a nicer person, you know. If people didn't like Rise to Meet You, that's why I would tell myself, yeah, maybe they're just, you know, more Evelyn's type. That's my type. But then, because this podcast is just me solo, and if people don't like it, I'm like, oh, shit, it's, it's me, isn't it? It's me. They hate me. <laughs> and I just spiral. I'm like, oh, no, I, I suck. I'm terrible at this. My self-worth, my self-worth. I'm terrible. A lot of building work going on, as usual, in my house. Every time I talk to someone and then I tell them that there's building work going on, they will always ask me, oh, so when is it all going to be done? And I, I just want to say, if you see me, just don't ask that question. Because that question depresses me, okay? I moved in to this place in September. Uh, the sale completed in June, end of June. I moved in in September and naively I thought, oh yeah, June to September, three months, it should be done. Easy, easy, right? That was very naive of me. <laughs> Cut to December 
and it's still not done. It's maybe 60%, 65% done. Uh, because I underestimated how long, uh, you know, chopping wood takes, <laughs> you know? I got carpenters to build like custom cabinets and stuff, uh, and they look really nice because, and you know, if something's custom, it fits like a little, whatever space perfectly, right? But I underestimated how long carpentry takes, you know? How would you even know that? I think, oh, building a cabinet, what, like uh, two days? Huh. Big mistake, brother. Big mistake. Nobody knows how long carpentry work takes. How many carpenters do you know in your life? Like, Jesus? He's the only one. <laughs> how many carpenters do you know? I don't even know. I, we, we, I took woodworking classes back in primary school. That's it. That's the closest I've come to to be a carpenter. And I hated that. That was a class. It was a very, very sexist class too, I think. I think... Uh, Wait, I don't remember now. Did they split split us into groups? Like the women learned sewing, and the guys learned woodworking. Yeah, that was very that was very weird, because I'll prefer sewing to be honest. I think sewing is a much more valuable skill, right? Woodworking. When was the last time you woodworked? You know how people always complain that algebra is useless. Woodworking is even more useless. Algebra, at least you can get to learn how to find the like the hypotenuse of a triangle. <laughs> it's kind of useful sometimes, you know? Like sometimes you're like, uh, this ladder is this tall, but this wall is this high and this far away. You know, you know what I mean? The, the, the hypotenuse calculations might come in handy sometimes. But woodworking, when are you going to use that? Sewing is useful. I break lots of shit. You know, especially my crotch area. I don't even know. My dick's not even that big, but every time my jeans rip, it's the crotch area. <laughs> that is like, come on, man. Can you build stronger crotches on your jeans for the man with the average size penis? You know? <laughs> Why does it keep ripping? I don't even cycle. I used to cycle uh, when I was in university, and my crotch ripped when I was cycling. That... I understand that. But now I just, I drive, I take the tube, and my crotch still rips. Like, what's the problem there, Levi's? Is this a problem that guys have? You know, okay, don't write in if you have a big-ass dick. Of course your crotch is going to rip. Okay, it's fucking just bulging and trying to contain it, and it can't. <laughs> it's like a dumpling about to burst, you know? <laughs> don't write in. If you have a big dick, the average to, you know, the, the average and below average dick size people, feel free to write in. You know, I ask listeners to write in or call in about the disappointments anyway, so it's quite useful. I, actually, I, I think uh, calling in is fine. It's really cool. I can play it on the, on the pod, but writing in is fine as well because I think every, a lot of people are really shy to leave voicemails, you know. So I think you can write in, a, you know, any disappointing stories, how you've disappointed people or how people have disappointed you, you can write into hayapod at gmail.com. Yeah, H-A-I-Y-A-A-P-O-D at gmail.com. So, is this a problem that happens to men out there? Your crotch rips? Or is it just a me problem? Yes. Builders. Builders, uh, builders, builders, builders. Somebody uh, told me, yeah, don't ask when it's finished, when it's going to be finished, because I don't fucking know. It's, uh, I, I try to enjoy the journey now. You know, I just, when people ask me that, I just become very zen, you know, because it just, you know, I, I'm quite miserable sometimes here with the drilling and stuff. Every now and then it's beautiful. When a room gets completed, it's beautiful. But then most of the time it's just builders. They come in at 7.45. I don't remember what it feels like to sleep in anymore. You know, every time I just got waken up by the builders just pounding on my door. 7.45 every day. I could be out till 3 or 4, hungover as fuck. They're still there. But they're very good. So I'm not bitching about them, not complaining. But when people ask me, when do you think this will all be done, Nigel? You're doing a lot of work to your house. When do you think it'll all be done? I just go, well, I don't know. But I'm just trying to enjoy the journey. I don't try to think when it'll be done. 
I just enjoy, you know, whatever new stuff gets built that day, you know? If new paint goes up, I just enjoy the paint. I touch the paint and feel it up. I, l I look at it, I stare at the paint and get aroused. That's the answer I give. And you know how people say when it comes to this kind of construction work or renovation work, fast, cheap, good, pick two of them. You know, so if you like fast, cheap and good, if you want fast and cheap, it's not going to be good. If you want cheap and good, it's not going to be fast. And there's a lot of truth to that, you know. But there's one more thing, you know. But in Asia, I talked to my friends. I had some Malaysian friends coming over to visit. And I met up with them, one of them yesterday. And, I, and we were talking about renovate, renovating. And they're like, yeah, my friend bought a big place, 2,000 square foot, you know, which is way bigger than my place. And then, oh, yeah, and the renovation just got done in three months. It was real, so fast. I was like, wow, three months. That's really fast. And then I realized... There are four things in the equation. It shouldn't be fast, cheap, good, pick two. It should be fast, cheap, good, human rights, pick three. Okay? If you don't pick human rights, you will have fast, cheap, good, easy. If there's no work-life balance, if you get the like a lot of Chinese builders, Asian builders, they fucking live in on the construction site. You know, I I I don't know why. Like I, I can't I cannot even imagine. Suggesting that to the builders here. <laughs> hey, 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 Ham. Hey, Ahmed. Um, would you mind just uh, you know, leaving your family for six months and just crashing and crashing in my guest room? Just don't talk to them for six months. You know, it's COVID anyway. You want to be safe, right? You don't want to kill your family, right, Ahmed? You want them to stay safe, right? Just stay at my place. <laughs> And what is work-life balance? There's no such thing. There's no such thing as burnout. You're just being lazy, Mohammed. Those are the names of my actual builders. You know, Aham, Ahmed, and Mohammed. They're all really good people. Just chill here. They're all from Syria. You know, and I think I <laughs> I made this joke to someone, and I, you know, it's a, it's pretty terrible, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh they 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 moved from Syria, I think some of them ten years ago, some of them six years ago. And they're amazing carpenters, amazing builders. And it's because, like, you know, they're getting bombed all the time in Syria. They have to rebuild their home every day. Of course, they're good carpenters. You know, they just wake up. Oh, shit, it's rubble again. All right, let's get to work, boys. You know, and they just <laughs> put shit together. <laughs> Benefits of being from a war-torn country. You will be a magnificent carpenter. <laughs> Oh God, I, I really hope I really hope this is funny enough to justify me saying this. <laughs> of course they'll be good builders. They're rebuilding their home every day. Every morning they wake up, it's like, okay, what needs fixing again? Where did the airstrike hit this time? Okay, there you go. Okay. And if everybody okay? Nobody lost a limb? Good. If you have if you have all your limbs, you get to work. I and listen, I have made this same joke to my builders and they found it hilarious. So fuck you people who are getting offended on behalf of them. <laughs> I think that is a terrible justification, by the way. You know, as a comic, you get a lot of these people, these like uh these really boring Oh you can't say anything anymore. These cancel the cancel culture type people, uh, they're so boring. You know, they all, they, and then one of their main arguments they use is, you know, I did this joke in front of insert group, insert marginalized group I'm offending. I did this joke in, in front of that group and they loved it. I'm like, uh, yeah, but that, that's not justification though, is it? Or is it? I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm confused now. If you make a joke, let's say I make a joke about black people, and then black people love it, but other other people, white people, get offended by it. Is that okay? What what are the rules of society now nowadays? <laughs> Is that okay? If I made a Syrian carpenter joke, and the Syrian carpenters love it, but my listeners don't. Is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> Hey nieces and nephews, if you're enjoying the podcast so far, please go leave a 5-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any podcast platform you're using. 
I read every single review and I've gotten a few really nice ones. So thank you so much for the kind messages. And it makes me feel really special. <laughs> Wrong sound effect. You make me feel special. Also, I'm going on a world tour next year. Uh, loads of UK dates, US dates, Canada, Australia, Europe, Malaysia, Singapore, everywhere. I'm going everywhere. So I hope to see you at one of the shows. Come say hi. Tickets are at nigelungcomedy.com. So yeah, go leave a review for the podcast and go to nigelungcomedy.com for live tickets. Hopefully see you at a live show. Come say hi. There's too, there's too much uh, new things I'm trying to learn, man, because I moved to this new street right uh and we have a street whatsapp group and it's uh, really boring conversations you know my my street the people who live on here are a bit older they're not the most not the most fun gang there's no you know there are no emojis a significant lack of emojis in their texts (laughs) i don't even know if they know emojis are a thing a lot of them are really old so i'm like do you even know emojis exist do you know what emojis are? Or are you just still texting it like square? Do you still are you still getting squares when I text emojis? <laughs> okay, they're on WhatsApp. I'm sure they know what emojis are. Maybe okay, they don't know what gifts are though. They don't use that. And the street WhatsApp group, the conversation is just oh, it's the most scintillating, exciting. I'm joking. It's not. It's really boring. They complain about their bins going missing. I didn't know you could you could lose a bin, right? Because in 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 where where I live in London, uh, every house outside their house they have uh, their own bin, two bins, one like trash, one recycling, right? So every Tuesday, the re, uh, the bin men, the rubbish people, what was what were they called? The, the rubbish collectors, not rubbish people. Jesus Christ, <laughs> sounds very judgmental. Rubbish people is not the PC term anymore, Nigel. Rubbish people is a very offensive term to bin men, to garbage people. <laughs> I don't know what the proper term is. But every Tuesday, the bin people come to empty the bins. And then that's Tuesday morning. And then Tuesday afternoon rolls around. The messages start coming in. It's like, have you seen my bin? I lost my bin. Have you seen my bin? I saw, uh, I'm number two. Have you seen my bin? And then people chime in. I saw your bid in front of number three. Maybe they took it. Uh, who's stealing a bin? Just look on the street, man. Who wants to steal a bin? I bring up my street WhatsApp group because I look at my street and uh, they're all, I think they're all British people, you know, native British people. And uh, everybody has Christmas decorations up on their front door. And it, it looks really nice. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I grew up in Malaysia, right? So Christmas, we didn't really celebrate it that much. Chinese New Year was more my thing. Lunar New Year, that, that's more my thing, right? Christmas, what we did was, as a family, we just went to see the lights in a shopping mall. <laughs> that's it. I know it sounds a little bit depressing in, in, in the Western context. But that's only because Western malls suck. Okay? Malls in Asia are fucking tremendous. They're beautiful. They're luxurious. You can buy like, you get Chanel in there. You can that that cocktail bars in there. It's karaoke rooms, batting cages. I think of one very specific mall in Malaysia. If from there, you will know. You know, one Utama, right? Right. Shout out, shout out to the Malaysian gang. <laughs> Let me alienate all my uh, foreign listeners. But we. Malls in Asia are really cool. Malls here suck, okay? Malls here are where people who can't go, can't afford to go to proper shops go to. It's the opposite. In Malaysia, if you have money, you go to the mall because that's where all the nice shops are. If you don't have money, then you go to the shops. I think that applies to most Asian countries. Malls are swanky there. You can spend a whole day there. You know, there's movie theaters in the mall. Multiple movie theaters in the mall. You can spend a whole weekend there. You know, you can sleep there. No, you, you can't sleep there, but there are hotels in there, you know. it's a, it, Imagine like going to a nice airport, but without the airport part. That's what a mall is in Asia. It's like swanky, you know. But malls here in the UK, and I think in uh, in the US as well, I've been there, and I think in the malls in the Western world, is where it's the opposite. 
People who can't afford to go to the shops, the nice shops, they go to the mall. It's weird. So, yes, malls are cool. We go to the mall, see the lights at Christmas Day, okay? And then, yeah, we don't really celebrate it, right? So I don't really know what to do. I'm, I'm terrible at giving gifts, you know, because Chinese New Year, you just give each other red packets with, uh, it's an envelope with money inside, and that's that's so easy. All you have to determine in your head is how much you like the person. And then you 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 control that amount of money accordingly. It's so easy. It's such an easy sliding scale, you know. This guy, good friend, fifty pounds. There you go. This guy, little bit of a prick, two pounds. Not pounds, but like two Malaysian dollars, right? Malaysian ringgit. But we we can't do two because those are you do want to put coins in there. You always want a piece of paper, so at least a five. You know, so you can't, I don't think you can do five anymore. That's a very cheapskate thing. So you at least do seven, which is like the minimum you can get away with five and a two dollar coins. You know, that's that's too much. But my point is, I am terrible at buying gifts for people because we are used to just giving people money. And giving people money, that, that is a very easy thing to do, right? Money, everybody can use it. You don't have to plan. You don't have to take the tube at rush hour the week before Christmas to fight with other people for money. You just go to the ATM, type in your pin, and that's it. So I guess this is the biggest disappointment of the week, that I'm learning how Christmas works. It's very hard. I should have paid more attention when I was still married to my ex-wife who was German, and Christmas was a big thing for her. Okay? Christmas was big, a big thing for her. I should have learned more from her. And by the way, we are still friends, so I'm not talking shit about her. Um... <laughs> Um, but Christmas was big for her And now I'm learning how to Buy nice gifts for people You know You can always go the easy route And just get people hampers From a fancy uh, grocery store Like Fort- We have a gr- chain here called Fortnum and Mason So they give you little like Hampers with Prosecco And maybe some dessert wine Some port in there You can do that uh, But I'm learning how to buy better gifts And it's hard because you actually have to listen. <laughs> you have to like listen to what people like and what people want. You have to remember. Ah, who has time for that? To listen? Ugh, I don't listen. That's for pussies. <laughs> you have to listen and then you have to write it down. No, no, no. I, I know. I know my problem. I've just been a very self-centered guy, okay, my whole life, you know, it's about like, me, 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 so I'm, I'm trying to get better at being like, you know, doing stuff for other people, okay, welcome to my therapy session, and this is what I'm working on right now, I need to buy gifts for people, that are gifts that they want, I need to stop buying gifts, that are secretly things I want, and I buy it, to give it to them because it's very self-centered, right? It's me saying, hey, I want this shit, so you should want this shit too. Let me give it to you. So I'm trying to learn to listen more. And how do you guys do it? Let me know. Like, do you, you listen? And then how do you remember? Because I remember when I was with my ex, she would like, she remembers. Listening is one thing. Listening is hard enough. And I have to remember? What am I? Rain Man? <laughs> Remembering what people want? So six months down the line, when Christmas rolls around, you can buy them exactly what they told you they wanted from six months ago? My ex-wife was so good at that. Even with me, I, when she get, bought me Christmas presents, I, I forget what she bought now, but when I got it, I was like, oh my god, I... I I forgot I wanted this. Even I didn't remember I wanted it. But she remembered. Like, how How do you do that? How do you how do you develop that skill? That is an impressive. Is this is this an Aquarius thing? You know, is is this horoscope related that some star signs are better at gift giving than other star signs? Is or is it just is it a gift? Like, you know, some people can multiply large numbers in their heads or can, you know, 
write poetry <laughs> is remembering what people want and buying them gifts, buying those things as gifts for them, a, 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 a gift, you know, a little talent you have. Well, I, I don't know. I'm trying to listen again already. That is very hard, you know. I started a solo podcast. I know listening is not my strongest suit. <laughs> If you start a solo podcast where it's just you yelling in an empty room, yeah, listening is not your your best quality. <laughs> ouch, ouch, roasted myself there. Ouch. You know, another big disappointment, I guess. Just realizing I'm not as nice a person as I thought I was. <laughs> listening is hard, man. You have to sit down and pretend to be interested in other people? Fuck that! No, 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 I kid, I kid. I try to listen, you know. If you're my friend, I try to listen. Listening is important. But listening is only half the equation, isn't it? How do you remember? Do you have... Yeah, tell me, listeners, how, how do you... Like, people are good at giving gifts. Do you have a note? Like an iPhone notes app where you write down what someone told you, like what they wanted? You know, like uh, like offhandedly, someone just said, "Oh, I would love to have some some stationery, you know, some kind of I, this is my favorite brand of, I don't know, face wash or something." You just buy them. You see, I, I'm so bad at gifts; I don't even know what people want. Yeah, I, I just I wish I would have like these oven mitts are really old now and haggardy, and I just wish I wish I had time to buy new ones. And you remember, and then how would you write down in a notes document somewhere? Is there an app for this? Is there an app? There should be an app for gift giving, you know? You type in people's birthdays. You type in peop what people want. Right? Listen, Instagram can show you ads based on what you and your friends are talking about, right? It's a very creepy thing, isn't it? So if Instagram can do that, can you send someone come up with an app that shows you what your friends discussed because I know you're listening, phone. I know you're listening. Okay. So can 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 someone just develop an app? It's already creepy enough. So use your creepiness for good. If you're gonna listen to my conversations, give me some tips. What I should buy my friends, right? I think that's a great idea. Why hasn't anybody done that yet? Come up with an app that listens in to all my conversations with my friends. And then when the birthday, two weeks before the birthday comes along, like a month before Christmas, the app just gives you a notification. Bing! Oh, your friend Kevin mentioned that he would like a pair of sneakers. This brand, this size. Would you like to buy it for him? And then you just swipe to pay and then it just gets mailed to him. That would be great. I realize I just want, I love apps that make me seem like a better person than I am. Is that what we all want out of apps? You know, Instagram, you post your highlight reels of your life, right? So it just it just makes you seem like a better person than you are, right? What about this present app? That'd be great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Headspace, the app. Anybody still using Headspace? It was so trendy, wasn't it, like two years ago? Headspace is one of those apps you have on your phone just to impress other people, I think. Or Duolingo. The number of people I see who have Duolingo on their phones and the number of people who are actually, who can actually speak the language, they're two very different groups of people, okay? I've seen so many people have Duolingo, but they can't, they can only speak English still. I'm like, what are you using Duolingo for? Fucking English? Headspace Duolingo is one of those apps that just make you look better than you are. You know, just kind of those, yo, look at this. How productive am I? Oh, you on the tube playing Fruit Ninja? Playing that numbers game where you're trying to get 2048, the sliding box numbers game? Not me. I'm trying to continue my Duolingo streak. I know so many people who use Duolingo, and I, but I only know one person who actually learned stuff from it. So that's not good. That's my disappointment of the week. Everybody getting COVID, you know, build their problems. And of course, not being good at Christmas. 
And for this next segment, we're going to do something quite special, okay? We're going to get Uncle Roger on to talk about a little bit about his, you know, backstory. I'm sure a lot of you want to know, how do you grow up? Where do you grow up? How do you meet Auntie Helen? Yeah, are you ready to talk about that, Uncle Roger? You want to, to come talk about how you met Auntie Helen? Your little love story that didn't work out? Please welcome Uncle Roger. Hello, niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. Welcome to Nephew Nigel Podcast. Uncle Roger will be special guest every now and then. Because Nephew Nigel, he okay, he okay. But everybody, they just want to come and see Uncle Roger on podcast. And on podcast, Uncle Roger can go into more of my life history. Because I'm not reviewing someone cooking. I uh, every day review cooking. But nobody know who I am. It's so sad. Uncle Roger dropping by today to tell you my story of how I met Auntie Helen. Everybody know Auntie Helen is Uncle Roger, ex-wife. But do you know how we met? Do you know? No, because Uncle Roger never tell you. Uncle Roger used to run street food store back in Malaysia. Street food, I just sell noodle and rice. Back then, it's so easy. You just sell stuff. Nobody asks for vegan food. Nobody asks for food allergy replacement. I cannot eat this, cannot eat that. Hi, yeah, so annoying. But back then, it's so easy. And Auntie Helen was one of Uncle Roger's first customer. She came to my stall. She sit down. I saw her and I was like, oh my God, that's the most beautiful woman I saw. So when I brought my noodle to her, she finished eating and she asked for bill. I go over. I say, oh, your bill here. This is how much it is. And then I put my number in there also. We, back then, we didn't have Instagram DM slide. So that's how I DM slide. You write your number on a piece of paper and give it to woman. So Auntie Helen got my number. She go home. A few days, I don't hear from her. Uncle Roger's so sad. Every day I go into work. Every day I go into work, I hope I run into her again. Because she's very beautiful. Very beautiful. That was many years ago. Now Auntie Helen looks ugly. Don't worry. But one day I got call from her. Yeah, correct. This is back when people still call each other. Nowadays, everybody's scared of calling people. Hi, yeah. Why so pussy? Calling people, you scared also. Why you scared of call? Calling people is the safest. You can piss them off. They can't punch you. You call them. You tell them they're an idiot. They, what they can do, the worst they can do is hang up on you. You're not gonna get beat up. The worst you hear is, fuck you. Boop, 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 boop. That it? Why are you scared, call? So anyway, I got a call from random number. I pick up. <gasps> Turn out it Auntie Helen. I was like, Helen? Oh, you, your name Helen? Oh, you're the customer. Okay, okay. What do you want? She calling Uncle Roger because her office doing Chinese New Year party. And she say, oh, Roger, your food, your food very good. Your noodle very good. Can you cater for our office party? And Uncle Roger go, yeah, yeah, can, can. Uncle Roger lying. I only have 12 set of chopsticks. Not enough to cater for office party. Just 12 set. But because Auntie Helen called and Uncle Roger is so in love with her. The next day, I just went out and bought 50 pair of chopsticks. Used up all my life saving to buy 50 pair of chopsticks. And then I realized, fuck, I don't, don't have enough bow. <laughs> just 50 pair of chopsticks with six bow. Hiya. So Uncle Roger keeps saving up money so I can buy bow. I took a loan out from the bank. I went to bank. The bank asked me what you need this money for. I say to buy bow to impress woman. And the banker look at me like I stupid. Buy, buy bow to what? But I still got the money. Because this was before financial crisis. Money is so easy to get. You go to bank, you want to get a loan. They ask you what the loan for. You tell them any crazy reason, you get money. <laughs> this was a good old day. You can say, oh, my hamster always hungry. I want to buy more food for hamster. That's why I need a loan. And they give you a loan. They don't even check. No need to check your credit. Just sign on paper and your hamster will be fed. So I bought all the equipment, all the ingredients. Go to a place, cook for her. It's very good. 
everybody like Uncle Roger food. So after it went, Auntie Helen came up and we start talking about her life. Turn out we from the same from the same village in Kuala Lumpur. We from the same village in Malaysia. So many things in common. So many friend in friend friend with ben, not, not not friend with benefit. So many mutual friends. Back in those days, no no such thing as friend with benefit. <laughs> Back in those days, you have sex once you marry. That, that what? <laughs> okay, Uncle Roger going a bit crazy now because it's very late. It eleven thirty p.m. That why Uncle Roger going a bit crazy. But anyway, we start talking, and then we start going out and dating back then. Very very innocent. Also, we just go ride on rickshaw. Look at the moon, look at the star. And then we just walk by the river and everything. And we talk about life, we talk about everything. We have so much in common. I like food, she likes food. Yeah, that, that's the only thing we have in common, actually. <laughs> in hindsight now, terrible. You should not marry woman because you both like food. That a terrible idea, hi yeah. You need to look at her personality and her character also. But everything was good. So we got married, we lived together. So many other marriage stories Uncle Roger will share next time. But why we broke up? Because one day, I noticed that was just when you start to use cell phone. Cell phone just came into market. Remember when your cell phone looked like brick? Big air cell phone. And then you have antenna on your cell phone. And that when I realized, I see Auntie Helen always sneaking out, carrying a brick. She thinks she's smart. She's hiding the cell phone in her bra. But back then, if you hide cell phone in your bra, everybody can see that you're hiding cell phone in your bra because your tit becomes square. <laughs> I'm like, why, why, why your tit square? Because cell phone in there. Hi, yeah. What you, what you gonna? Why, why you hide there? So stupid. She always hiding the phone in her bra and just running outside to call someone. I call this person. I go, who are you? Long story short, we will talk about this more in next next few episodes. But long story short, this guy is a chef. And guess where he went to school to learn how to cook? The Jamie Oliver School of Cooking. <laughs> and that is... A quick summary of why Uncle Roger hate Jamie Oliver and why Uncle Roger broke up with the ex-wife Auntie Helen. Keep listening to this podcast. Uncle Roger gonna appear every now and then and fill you in more on my life story. Many happy moments with my marriage with Auntie Helen. Many happy moments and many sad moments also. So we talk more about that in the next episode. Now back to Nigel. Bye-bye. Okay, now it's back to me. Uh, that was Uncle Roger. Hope you guys enjoyed his little uh, life story. And let me know if you want to s- see Uncle Roger more on the podcast. Uh, because, you know, Uncle Roger, he wants to create his own animated series. You know, a little cartoon, Uncle Roger cartoon. So we are both, me and him, we're discovering, we're trying to write down his life story. So every time he talks about his life story, I'm writing it down. And then one day we'll write a script, a little Uncle Roger animated movie, or an Uncle Roger animated TV series, you know? And we'll try to sell it to a network and try to make it happen. So that's why if you like that segment, the Uncle Roger live story segment, you want to see him do it again, okay? Leave a comment. Every now and then he'll, we'll get him on, do some new stories. It'll be really fun. All right, before we finish up, I want to read out an email. So we do this thing where we get listeners to write in or call in so about your recent disappointments. And I think I have a good one, you know? We got an email in from Shane Huang. Okay, Shane, thanks for writing in. Uncle Roger, thanks for speaking up for Asian people. You are welcome. Okay, I got to do it. Like I said in the last episode, I am the best representative for all Asian people, okay? I, I am crushing it at the representation. <laughs> Thanks for speaking up for all Asian people. My name is Shane, sending love from Adelaide, South Australia. Something about disappointment to share here. 
The other day, I ran a Christmas show for the residents in the aged care I work at. The management gave me a Santa suit to put on. Unfortunately, I think I had disappointed residents because as I was singing and bouncing around, my pants fell down, and I accidentally had put on a Santa strip show for the oldies. Oh, very sexy, Shane. <laughs> Is this what you played in the background too? Because old people, you know, this is this is their song. This is this is their, this is their Mr. Brightside. This was their hit, you know. As your Santa, as your Santa pants slowly fall down from your crotch, as those and and you hear the bells because most Santa pants they have the little bells on them and they fall down. And then it falls down to your ankles. And at, at that point, there's an old woman sitting on your lap. Was someone sitting on your lap when that happened? I hope not, Shane. <laughs> Let's see, what do you say? Oh, you're singing and bouncing around. Okay. So your pants fell down. But, you know, surely, Shane, you were wearing underwear, right? I hope you're wearing underwear. Or is that a thing where you dress up as like Santa Claus? You're not supposed to wear underwear. Is that a rule? I don't know, I never dress up as Santa Claus, but okay. But let's assume they saw all your whole your whole thing. The whole package. The thing is, if you don't expect people to see you naked, it never looks good. For a guy, you know, if you want it to look good, you gotta like, you know, get it like firm and hard and nice and ready to go, right? You gotta get it like throbbing. <laughs> gotta get your dick throbbing. You gotta get your dick photo ready. Photo ready. You want a photo-ready penis for the old folks at the old folks' home, okay? You don't want a flaccid deer-in-the-headlights penis. <laughs> Which I think that was what he had. If you're not expecting for your penis to be visible, it's never good looking. You ever notice that, people? <laughs> I try to do a, a very non-relatable bit, but in an observational comedy way. You ever notice? You ever notice when you try when when you want to show your dick off, a dick looks great because it knows it's about to you know do some mo get a modeling contract or something. But if you accidentally flash your penis without knowing, and your dick doesn't know it's gonna get seen, your dick looks shriveled, looks flaccid and sad. Looks like a like a sad sausage just. <laughs> So what was the dick situation there, Shane? Was it nice and throbbing that the old ladies there go, Oh my. Oh my. That reminds me of that. Oh. Reminds me of Werther's original. <laughs> oh my. The last hard dick I saw was when my husband was at the ward and he sent me a dick pic. Back then, sending dick pic meant you had to write a love letter first because you might die the next day. Dearest Amelia, life is hard in these trenches. And please see and close the picture of my dick. Were there cameras back then during the war? How did they do it? Or did they get their, uh, did they get their army friends to draw their dicks out and then send it back? My dearest Amelia. Can you imagine if you sent a dick pic in, in the war times and then Amelia got it and she was like, oh my God, so sweet, got a dick pic. And then the next day, the general general comes around and be like, um, your husband has been killed in the line of duty. I'm really sorry. And your last memory of your husband was just that that charcoal graphite drawn dick pic from the trenches. But yes, Shane, thank you for writing in. Yes, yeah, sexual harass accidental sexual harassment, always a big disappointment. You know? If you want to sexually harass someone, you better make uh, don't don't do it. And accidental sexual harassment it must be worse, right? Because you didn't even mean it. You didn't even get the joy from that power dynamic, right? That's what they say, right? People flash people it's because they enjoy that 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 power over them. But Shane, you 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 sexually harass someone. I mean, you sexually harass your old old folks' home residents without even gaining the pleasure of the power. Very big disappointment. Oh my god, you're killing me, woman! Hiya! 
Very, very high, yeah. Very high, yeah. And that's about it for this episode. See you next week. Remember to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and every podcast platform of your choice. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, and tweet about it. Share about it. Instagram story. Uh, post it on your Instagram stories. Post this episode on your Instagram stories. Um, my Twitter is pretty pathetic right now for uh, this podcast, so go follow the Twitter. I don't have a lot of followers on there. Uh, it's about at 100 right now as we record, so go follow the Twitter. See you next week. <laughs>